Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today I'm going to have my conclusion of the F11. Now, as always, I'm going to do an honest conclusion. So I do pride myself on the fact that I tell you how it is on these videos. And this is going to be no exception. So, let me start by saying this thing actually blew me away. Not because of its video quality. The video quality is what I expected. It's average. It's the way it flies. It's incredible. It's so smooth in the air and so locked in. On cheap GPS drones, when you turn, you normally get this thing where it wobble and then grab its position. This doesn't. It's so smooth. It turns smoothly. The only thing it does do, uh, when it's at height, it'll drop a slight bit of altitude on the turn. But when I'm saying a slight bit of altitude, I'm on about a foot. And as long as you put some throttle in when you turn and you don't get any of that anyway. It really is that nice to fly. It's not quick, don't get me wrong, it's quite slow. But for a camera drone, that's what you'd want. The only thing that I do wish is this thing had a, a two or three axis gimbal on because it'd be superb. It doesn't, and you're going to get shaky footage that you're going to see. But if it had the gimbal, this thing would be absolutely, truly unbelievable. 19 minutes flight time. The controller, which I thought felt a bit cheap, I was so wrong about. It's so smooth and precise in the air, this controller. It does exactly, there's no lag on the sticks. The resolution is good. It does exactly what you want it to do. Range was fantastic. I had no issue with range. Uh, six, seven hundred meters with no problem at all. The app didn't crash. It's, I went about three or four hundred meters, I think the app went for without having an issue. Absolutely fantastic. I cannot recommend this enough to you. If you're looking for a cheap camera drone and you're not bothered about a gimbal, this is the thing. So for me, I'm probably now going to have a go mounting a GoPro session on this and filming in 4K to see what I get like. I'm going to work out something to 3D print something to go on the top of here to hold my camera and we're going to try it with that because it is that nice a drone. It's so smooth in the air. You're going to see from the footage, I've videoed it um, a couple of ways. My wife videoed it with a the camera then I've used the hat cam. You're going to see that, see how smooth it is in the air and how locked in it is and you're going to see it's return to home. I'll only put the end of the return to home and you'll see how far it lands from the map. Bearing in mind, I set the return to home at 60 metres height. Um, I was messing around with the settings and I put all the settings up because it was in beginner mode when I first started flying. Didn't realise, took it, landed it, put all the settings up and I didn't realise I had a 60 metre return to home but it went up 60 metres. I hit return to home, see what it was like. Not a problem at all. You, now the only thing that I can criticise the whole drone for, apart from, I, I'm not going to criticise the camera because the camera's what I expected. It looks like the F, um, the Z5 camera, so I got what I paid for, to be honest. And this it really is what I paid for. I paid for a GPS drone that was locked in and had a non-stabilised 1080p camera, and that's exactly what I got. The only thing I can criticise it for is SD cards. If you buy one of these, I recommend you do this first. Before you even attempt to fly it, put the SD card in, connect it to the app and try recording to the SD card and make sure that your recording goes onto the card. I stupidly swapped cards again, having known this, and that's my first part of the video is missing, which is why I've only got like four minutes of flight time. When I landed it, and when I stopped it and started it again, it recorded, because I didn't test the card first. So just bear that in mind. This isn't unknown for these type of drones. You don't want... For once, you don't want a stupidly fast card. You want a normal card. You don't want something high. You want something maybe an 8 gig would be absolutely ideal for this drone. I put a 16 gig in and it's worked fine. So that's the only thing I would say about the drone that I could really criticise it on. Everything else is fantastic, including its flight time. I really do love it. I haven't tested its modes out yet. As, as you probably know, I live in the UK and the weather's always horrible, so I've just caught between rain severe clouds, wind, and we'll have this flight. Uh, later on in later on this month I'll probably get some I'll get some of the flight up, show you that it's a longer flight and also show you what it's follow me mode and all the rest of it's like. But I did not buy it for that purpose, but I will do it on this drone so you can see. So for me, massive thumbs up. For once I've got a drone um that I really do like because at the minute I think to be getting drones and then they, they don't do what they say on the tin. This one does. If you're wanting a drone that's got the camera quality of a Spark, don't buy this, but don't even look at any drone under 300 quid because they're not going to give you what you want. They're just not going to. You're not going to find a drone that has camera quality like a DJI Spark or something like that for under 300 pounds. It doesn't exist. 
go buy yourself a DJI Spark. You can get them for around two. I see one for two sixty this morning uh, on a place called Drones Direct. It doesn't come with a controller. They're selling it for two sixty for a Grade One, which has been refurbed by them. That's what you need to buy. Not this. But if you want a drone and you're just getting into it, this is a perfect starter drone for me because it's so easy to fly, it's untrue. The, the speed control's adjustable here. If you set off in low, so you hold it all the way back till it beats, it's slow. And even if you speed, the top speed on this thing is nothing like DJI or anything like that, don't get me wrong, but it's not designed to be. So, nothing to be waffling. I'll leave you with the video footage. You're going to see it hovering first. You're going to see a bit of flight filmed with the camera so you can see how stable it is in the air. Then I'm going to show you the flight footage. Have a fantastic day. Thanks ever so much for watching. And thanks again for all your support. You're immense. So this is it taking off. You can see how locked in it is straight away. There's no messing around. It doesn't wander all over the place. It does virtually lock itself straight in. Very, very impressive. So this is the footage taken from the SD card, and as I said in the conclusion, there is shake in the video, but it doesn't bother me. The camera is exactly the same as the Z5, so it's not going to look any better or any worse than that. It does look slightly better probably because it's got brushless motor and the drone is more stable, but to me, it's adequate for what it is.